And we are live. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. So Lisa, how are things at the, your place today? Are your chickens up and around? Yes, and they are happy that it is not the 90 degree weather that we got short, you know, for a little bit. So Oh, I, I know. That was crazy up to 90. That's a little I thought, what are we going straight from uh, winter into summer or something? But back <laughs> back down today. Yeah, yeah. So and Allie is, is here with us, and we are so happy to have her. We'll let y'all and she'll introduce herself a little bit later, but we're excited to have you on this morning. Thank you for and having me. Yeah, Laura is uh, fixing a fence. She sent me a message, and we'll see if Jennifer makes it. Um, as y'all know, if you've been watching a while, Jen is she she floats in and out depending on if somebody walks into her office or not, because if they walk in. She can't be on. So um, anyway, so Lisa, uh, we um, we kind of have some new things going on here in the group. Do you right. want to uh, talk a little bit about that or we want to just give people maybe another couple minutes to get out? We're actually right on the dot right this minute. So maybe ah. we should. Um, so Al Allie, where where are you? Tell us where you are. Um, I live in Texas. And Fort Worth on the Fort Worth side, not the Dallas side, but yeah, I live I live in Texas, and uh, I love it. It's awesome. I yeah yeah. We I, just moved here about two years ago. So, oh, is that right? Wow, that's mm -hmm. not very long. No. Nope. And where did you move from? Uh, we used to live in South Carolina. So well, that, and then before that, we lived in uh, Utah and Idaho and Virginia and. <laughs> So, oh, moved so you a lot. been around a little while. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> moved. I know. It's like, um, I, I wouldn't know how to, I don't know what it would be like to live in the same place your whole life. I mean, I know a few people that that's the case and it sounds pretty wonderful on some degrees, but on the other side, it's like, I don't know. Cause I've met so many people and been so many you know different places it's like okay i think i would miss the moving which is why i guess some of us move and some don't right <laughs> yeah yeah well and i and i uh i was a military brat growing up like as a kid so i've moved like everywhere we even lived in europe for a while and like so i am very much like can we just stop moving can we just like stay one spot now <laughs> so we're hoping this is like forever you know stay at least for a long time i i want to i want to stay here for a really long time so um, looks like we we probably will unless my husband gets fired, which he won't because he's awesome. But you know, you never know what what you know the the job it stuff holds, which is why I'm an entrepreneur. And <laughs> yeah, exactly, because your business can be anywhere. So that's good. Exactly. I see number four. So it looks like it just clicked. Oh, I guess not. Okay, I thought it clicked to a four on my screen, and I thought that meant four people, but I guess not. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So, Ali, I know you have used StreamYard longer than I have. Uh, mm -hmm. At the top of my bed, a little eyeball is a, a four, and then it switched to five. What does that mean? That means that four or five people are watching. Oh, that's how many people are watching. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see. All these little yeah, so kids. tell him to put in the comments, say comment if you are watching so he can see you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. see if we have anybody saying good morning. So I'm going to say good morning. So want to remind y'all that um, in order for us to see your name, you have to click that little permission thing that uh, shows up on your screen on that invitation that you got showing that um, that we're going to have the show and what time then it use, has a little permission thing. So anyway, so that is it. So, yeah, OK, so this box is showing and I think the main place we get the comments are on the Delinda Lane speaker page. And, uh -huh. there oh, there we, we go. go. Kathy, howdy from Chili KC. Yeah. So is it oh, Wendy Kathy. there too? Know Kathy. Kathy. You know Kathy. 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 Absolutely. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we want to know how, first of all, we want to know where you are. It's when you check in. I love to see where people are. And then also, yeah, how's your morning going? And uh so Lisa, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the new things and the comments and how they really, really want to comment. <laughs> um, well, we, we've been discussing the fact that we're going to have each uh, morning, we're going to have a word of 
that we're going to concentrate on. And today we're going to concentrate on leadership because of Ali. And um, and then we'd like people to the next week when we get on and, and we're greeting each other. How did that uh, word come into their week and, you know, how did it impact them? And so we'll talk about so next week we'll talk about leadership a little bit as we enter the scene and then we'll enter our new word. Uh, we want our also our viewers to pick some of those wonderful wor words that we're going to be discussing. Uh, I, for me, words are powerful. I think that a lot of people in this circle, words are powerful. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to have that. And the other thing is, is that um, we're going to be having a raffle. Uh, and for those who are participating and doing things, we haven't quite got that all set up, but we're going to have some fun times around here. And um, I think I covered it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And Allie is going to be our first one to uh, she's donating a gift to uh, to our raffle, which we're going to do the last week of April. So we'll do since we only have one week that we started this in March, then we'll go through April at the end. And um, there's this really cool. We're going to try it. Um, this wheel that spins and we'll, everybody who has, has uh, participated name goes on the wheel and we spin the wheel and y'all will be able to see actually who the winner is. I hadn't told you about that, Lisa, because I just, I just figured out how to do it. <laughs> so, it's the best. It's so fun. Especially when the, when the name pops up and there's all the confetti and it's, oh, it's so fun. Yeah, there is. We use it on HMP. And so it's like, mm -hmm. okay. So uh, Kathy uh, gave me the link for it or showed me how to do it. And then I went and put all the different colors because you know, I'm not going to do boring black and white. <laughs> so, <laughs> so awesome. we, make it fun yeah, we tried it out so kathy says it's windy feels like 44 and that's how the fence blew apart oh my gosh <laughs> so, that's not good <laughs> yeah yeah so we do encourage y'all to comment and um ali will tell you later about what she's uh, donating it's, it's very it's very cool um and so i think y'all will whoever is the winner of that will love having that i do so, what we're gonna say we were gonna say everybody here please share into your uh, feed if you will and like the show this helps us expand our viewership <laughs> absolutely yeah that uh yes yeah, so if you enjoy it and want to bring somebody in it's like we're going to just all have our morning coffee or tea together right this is our casual morning pretend that we're all sitting around a little breakfast table <laughs> so. mm-hmm so very, very, very cool. So Allie, tell us a little about you personally, and then we'll give you a chance to tell us what you do. But um, yeah, just tell us about you, your family, whatever you want to tell us. Yeah. So um, let's see. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I have four kids, um, three girls and a boy. My oldest is 13. And then I have one that's 11, almost 12. And then I have a girl that is uh, how old is she? Eight. <laughs> and then I have my little boy who is six, six, I believe. Yeah. So nice. yeah, so it's a full house and, uh, but we love it. And they're all into dance and sports and music and just all the things. So we're in the, in the thick of me being chauffeur to drive everywhere. <laughs> so another reason for being able to work from home, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I'm obviously a Christian, so that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I just, I love being able to talk with people, chat with people. Um, and so I just really appreciate you having me on because I love this kind of stuff. So, no, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's not long, and I'm going to get to be on your show. So, like, I know it'll be great. Then <laughs> we trade back and forth. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so our word today that you picked, and that, as Lisa mentioned, is now how, so we have our word of the week. And we did this a couple of years ago, and it was so fun uh, just picking a, a different word. And we never know really where it's going to lead because we don't script this. Ellie and I were talking about the, the, that earlier. Uh, we don't script it because we really like it to just go by osmosis. <laughs> and Lisa's laughing at me up there. <laughs> But it really is fun to have a word because I think sometimes word hit words hit each of us differently. This particular word, we probably are very much the same. Um, but let's talk about let's talk about that. So Lisa, right off the top, what does that word even mean to you? So what do you think leadership? I mean, not what do you think leadership is? What does it mean to you? 
Wow. I mean, leadership is such a deep word. So we'll just start from the the first little surface area, which yeah. is that that I think each of us um, have a role in leadership in many of our hats. So sometimes we put a hat on, we have leadership. Sometimes we take that hat off and we let somebody else lead us. But um, as women, since we wear so many uh, hats, uh, some of those have tags of leadership up in the little lip of the hat there. And so um, I think it's important when we put on that hat and it is a leadership role that we start to think of everything that we affect outside and how we interact. So um, I'll, I'll start that with, with that type of uh, comment. Mm. Yeah, that is. And Allie, since you picked the word, why did you pick the word? Um, because that is what I'm growing into right now. I'm growing into my leadership. And um, to me, what it means is being able to be humble and teachable and um, also being willing to um, be a good delegator, actually. Um, not delegator as in they're going to do stuff for me, but delegator as in being able to raise up more leaders and not be like, I'm going to do everything myself because I'm the leader and I know better than everybody else, you know, because that's not to me. I feel like that true leadership is developing more leaders and helping people to see the value that they bring and the contribution that they can bring to the greater good, you know, the greater whole. So um, because I, I feel like for me, I don't know if anyone can relate. So comment, <laughs> comment, and let me know if you can relate to this. But um so often it's so much easier to just do it yourself <laughs> or to like just be the leader and do the stuff and and then it, it's more efficient and what, what you know but that is actually being very selfish because it's it's keeping everything to yourself and that's why i love what you guys are doing here is you're allowing other people to step in as you know shining in whatever it is that they do um and and who they are not just what they do but who they are and i think that that is true leadership and so yeah right sandra yeah i totally agree because i i think that um i think that so often when we get stuck in our like little bubble of like i'm going to be the leader of my own life and i'm not going to you know i'm just going to do my own thing even as a parent so let's not even talk in a business sense but like even as a parent <laughs> Oh, that's even harder because I'm like, okay, I, I don't want them to, you know, unload the dishwasher because they're going to do it wrong or, I'm, or I don't want them to fold the laundry because it's going to take 10 years for them to get, you know, but that's not allowing them to be a leader either. They're, it, it's, you know, making me do it for them, which then number one gets me more frustrated because then it's more work I have to do, but also it's um, a doing them a disservice because they're not learning how to step into what they need to be able to do you know so anyways i went off on a tangent but that's kind I of why it. i chose leadership because it's a di it's different than what you think so many people think it's like being a king or being a president or being whatever but you think about all the people that um that surround that leader and the reason they're a leader is because they know how to bring great people to surround them and support them and they allow those people to shine. And so that's exactly what you guys are doing here. So I love it. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and that truthfully, that is something that I've had to work on through the mm -hmm. years because, you know, it's like, okay, well, I can just do this really fast now. And late Lisa actually is helping me release some things like, okay, let some other people help you. Okay. Like she's running the board today. Um, and it is, um, although I always encourage people, you know, I, one of my gifts is I can see the gifts inside other people. I mean, I can just mm -hmm. see their wow factor or whatever. So I always like to encourage them. But when it comes to like no basic, uh, I don't know, something that I'm working on, often it is hard for me to let go and, you know, allow someone in, else to take, you know, to take that, um, that role. But yeah. I totally agree. A, a true leader really does lift up others and inspire other people to be their best. Yeah. And um, one of the things that uh, there's a man that my husband's working with right now. And what I've noticed about him and I asked Bill about, it, I said, you know, it seems to me that Tom really surrounds himself with strong people. And he says, yeah, he does. 
you know, really, a, you know, I, I'm blessed because at this point, you know, God has just brought so many amazing people into my life that are better than me in many areas. And what I've learned is, yeah, that is wonderful because if I surround then together, we all make a whole. And that's, I think, um, what leaders do, like you said, Allie, it mm -hmm. brings other people together. And then everybody, everybody grows, everybody learns and gets better mm -hmm. uh, when that's the case. They really do. Yeah. Well, Allie brings up a, a great point, which is, I mean, even in time management, the, the delegation is part of leadership. And yet that's the one of the hardest parts that for when I train executives on time management has to do with their ability to delegate because it's like, no, 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 it needs to be this way. And, and they they won't let it go because here's the interesting thing as leaders, we can delegate and train somebody. It might not ever be as good as if we did it ourselves, and that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's better because yeah, maybe, maybe they're they, gonna do it even better. <laughs> But yeah, but, but, but it, see, like in businesses, the reason that business entrepreneurs have a very hard time of, of delegating is because they put their heart and soul into it. A lot of times when you bring that uh, employee in, at, especially at first, they're not going to put their heart in from the same perspective that you do. It doesn't mean they're not doing their best. But when we're owning a business and we're delegating, it's hard because we're like, oh, no, I would have arranged everything just perfectly and and for me you know in graphics if so i've got somebody doing graphics it's like almost painful letting them delegate <laughs> and, and letting it go and saying nope I, I i can do more and in and, and grow other leaders when i let go of my own little insecurities that i'm my exactly i completely yeah, agree. i see sandra made a good point she said it takes time to foster that relationship it's mm -hmm. not something you're going to give away right away. That that yeah. is for sure. And as yep. those other people come in and and uh, you trust them, you you oh yeah, Barry Ann said that right there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It is a building of trust, and then knowing you know that you can release that. And say you know, and like I said, Ellie, I think too. Oftentimes, and I've seen this a lot. Oftentimes, I think I'm doing a really great job, and then someone will come along like Lisa. And <laughs> and Jenna's like, oh, wow, that is so much better than I could have done by myself. And that is that is a wonderful thing. And I think I would encourage more leaders. And as you say, even and I think every everybody, I mean, I, since most of us are women and that's our group that we go towards, um, every woman is a leader and it could be in her home and whether you're working outside the home or not. We are leaders oftentimes in our various spheres of influence. You know, you might be a leader at church, you know, it might be in, like, say, our families. There's lots of places where people look to us as the leader. And I think, Lisa, you mentioned that kind of in the beginning that, you know, we need to look at that and see where are people looking at us as the leader and how are we, you know, are we doing that efficiently or in the in the best way to uh, lift other people up? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I think that when you do that, you are, you are, that's where the humility comes in. And that's where the being teachable comes in too, because when you're able to look outside yourself and see the value in other people and allow them to build, you know, build their confidence in themselves and what they're doing, they're going to turn right back around and do the same for, for the next person, you know, and you just, and it key and it becomes like this, this ripple effect of creating people to be the best people that they can possibly be and the best influence that they can possibly be in the entire, you know, all, you know, in the entire world, you know? So, so mm -hmm. it's not just about one person, but it's about who they can influence, right. And who they can, bless and and so on and so on and so on and that's how movements happen that's how change happens that's how you know uh things start to become uh better is through the ripple effect because one person can make a huge difference because they it starts with them and then it goes out from there and when you create more leaders by being humble meaning that you're not just going to take it on all yourself and by um being willing to allow others to you know, shine in whatever they're doing, even if you're like, oh, I could do that better, <laughs> you know, because the, the thing is that I've realized too, is 
I've had a lot of pieces of humble pie that I've had to eat because so often people have um, just completely blown me away when I would think, oh, well, you know, I, I've been doing this forever. I can totally do this way better, you know, because uh, I'm an expert at it or whatever. But then when I let someone else come in and, and share what they know or, or or allow them to do a piece of whatever I'm trying to create or whatever, um, they blow me away. They just blow me away. And it just reminds me that God has created all of us for a time such as this, right? He's created us all to get out there and bless as many people as we possibly can, but we can't do that if we're being prideful about it. And if we're like, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just, yeah. it's, a, yeah, it's just amazing. So I can go on and on. Sorry. <laughs> No, 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 this is great. Uh, one, yeah. one of the things that I'd like to ask our audience is what does leadership mean to them and, and yeah. post that in there for us because this is where by using this word of the day and we're all going to have to get used to some of the new things about this new word I mean word of the week excuse me the wow <laughs> <laughs> um, is the to to interact with our audience and get that power and energy going back and forth between mm -hmm between our conversation panel and mm -hmm. our audience. So if you guys would like to put in to the comments, what does leadership mean to you? Or what's your sage wisdom for leadership? We would love to pick up on that. Yes. Yes, we really would. Um, I'm going to make a little detour here um, and because Allie, I want to, uh, you know, the, the best leader of all, as we know, is Jesus. <laughs> That's where we take our inspiration from. And um, Allie has a very interesting, uh, a very cool business, and I, I love it. Uh, and just tell us a little bit of, about that. And I'm going to put your thing on here because I, I love your I love your tag. I mean, I, I just oh. think it's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, OK, real quick before I move on to that. So Sandra says humility and confidence, right? Confidence. Is that what it is? OK. Humility and confidence. I love that. Yes, yeah. completely. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I love it. Um, so a little bit about my business. So basically, I am a Christian connector concierge. So I connect Christian women entrepreneurs with resources, tools, people, opportunities, and platforms that can truly enhance their life, build their kingdom business, and ultimately um, keeping God at the center of everything that they do. Um, and primarily like in their business, whether their business is front facing with God or not. Um, I think it's important to always keep him at the center. Um, and obviously our, our amazing savior, Jesus Christ as well, because we would not be here without that, <laughs> you know? So, um, so yeah, so I think it's important to keep him at the center because then everything else will fall into place the way that it needs to, or it'll fall away. So yeah. yeah. And there's certainly, I mean, the Bible is just full. I mean, scriptures is full of, of leadership things. And, and if you read through and really study the life of Jesus, what an amazing leader he was. And it certainly wasn't about ego or any of that. So the things mm -hmm. that we've been talking about of humility and how he always, and he, he really took people at where they are, you know, and he exactly. wanted them always to be better. And I think, you know, that's, those are lessons we, easily can learn by, you know, paying attention to that as well. Well, he, he took the, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. Oh, no, go ahead and I'll, I'll finish up after. Okay. I was just going to say he took broken people, right? He took people that were tax collectors and, you know, fishermen and even people that had, were thieves and like all, you know, like people that had some, some rough edges. And he said, I want you to be my disciples. I want you to follow me. Just come and follow me. And it was beautiful. Like it just, he, he saw people for who they were and he wanted to then again, give them the opportunity to change and to grow and to become better um, and to watch what he was doing and then do that. You know? So I just, I just, I love that. Just, yeah, it's just amazing. Go ahead, Lisa. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, uh, Grace brought up a, a great point. One of our viewers that he brings the best out in others and, and lifts them up. Yeah. Can you imagine what the world would look like if that was our stance with every leadership role? I mean, it would 
be exponential. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as Delinda says, I, I love the fact that, you know, wow, the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like then the, uh, it, it's amazing how, I mean, I think if really, if every person, male and female, really saw themselves through God's eyes, and this is, I don't know, Al, if you've even heard me say that this has been kind of one of my things that I've said over the years, that if every single person could see themselves through God's eyes and through his love, we could wow the world. Truly, we could change, we as believers could change the world in a month if everybody truly did. Now, I know that's a simplistic thing to think about. But each of us, again, because we are leaders in some area, if, and if you don't think that you are, then I would suggest really look at your life. Like maybe this week, as Lisa, and we'll follow this up next week with any comments that y'all might have discovered about yourself, um, that if you look at your life and really pay attention, where are areas where God does have you in a leadership position that maybe you never even paid attention to that? Maybe you didn't realize that you were being a leader. And again, right in our own families as as mothers or daughters and w wherever you are and you may not have kids at home right now but if you if, you know maybe your kids are, have, are out of the house but i i'm finding that we still have just about as much influence with them living out on their own as, as they did when they were home it's just different ways that it, it shows itself well and you can also be a, a leader in your community in your like you said in your church in your uh, you know, whatever it is, you you can be a leader anywhere. Um, you can even be a leader um, f and kind of an ambassador for Christ even, you know, like just through everything that you do, um, just being that light around people. And there's just one gal that um, I'm really good friends with. And she's like, you know, I, I just want to be, I want to sit at the table with non-believers so that I can be that light of Christ for them. I can, you know, share share, you know, my love for Jesus and what he's done for me, um, to them to bring light in, you know, and, and, and get the darkness out, you know, get, get the hints, you know, whatever. But, um, but I, I just love that because, um, I don't know about you, but for me being a Christian, I would always just gravitate towards my Christian fellow Christian, you know, people. And I would not really, I, I would just stay in my little bubble, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm not doing a lot of growing here. I need to get out there and be bold in my faith. And I need to be able to um, uh, meet people where they're at, love them for where, who they are and what they are and, and how they are. And that's what Christ truly did, you know, mm -hmm. and, and break the, the division that we have, even within our own Christian faith, like, because there's all different, you know, denominations of Christian or even non-denominational Christians and all of that. But we just need to come together as a full body of Christ and really be able to just be a, a power for good because the adversary is trying to divide us even within our Christian faith, which is, um, you know, and I'm not saying that you don't keep practicing what your belief systems are. Of course, that's totally fine. But, but really stepping out of your comfort zone <laughs> And being able to listen to what other people believe and being able to respect them for where they are, but really being able to find the commonalities and the the um, the things that are the same and build on that. Because when we do that, Satan loses because we can get out there, we put on our armor of God and we just like blow them out of the water, you know, and that's what I feel like we're called to do now. I feel like it's getting more and more apparent that there's more and more division through everything that we're doing. Um, and so it's important to come together uh, as one so that we can really um, make a huge difference. Again, it's that ripple effect. So. Yeah, it really, it really does. It really does. Yeah. Oh, and one of the things still that I forgot to tell everybody is we were going to expand the show to 40 minutes, which is, you know, a few minutes for opening and getting that information and, and just a little bit after to to challenge and give you guys something to, to go for for the next week with our word. So it's right. Yeah. Because we are at the top of the hour, which is always what surprises me when we have when that happens. So yeah. uh, we're just because it's so easy to just go over that five minutes or so. And so we thought, well, why? Nobody ever said we could only be 30 minutes. 
minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but, the last but, but, four and a half years, we've been at 30 minutes plus sometimes going over a little. So yeah, so we're going to allow ourselves. I have to do, I'd have to do weird little things with myself, like, like play games in my head. So give myself permission that I, the show can go till 8, 10, you know, <laughs> yeah. okay. So now we've given ourselves permission to do that. But when we get to the top of the hour, that gives us that kind of that point of, you know, begin to wrap it up and any last comments and things like that. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. the, uh, so Ali, what, what is going to be your gift that will go into our raffle that we'll do at the end of uh, April? Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited about this. So this is actually one of the paid things that I have, but I'm giving it away for free. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so it's called the 21 day abundance challenge. And it isn't a challenge per se. It's just basically challenging you to, you know, do it. But um, basically, I'll just read the description here. So um, it is time to get you in the habit of abundance. If you have read Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, you know how important it is to have a routine. Well, this abundance challenge will get you going. Um, I will send you many thoughts and devotionals to motivate and encourage you to think and act abundantly every single day for 21 days. And we will be getting in the right mindset, becoming closer to God and changing your thinking to allow you to receive more abundance in your life. So it's more about getting in the habit of thinking differently, feeling differently, um, and really opening yourself up to all the blessings that God really does have for you in your life and in your business too. So, awesome. yeah. yeah. I love so, that. I love that. Oh, and uh, of course the uh, word abundance we use pretty often around here. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we've th that's been our word uh, uh, several times through the last couple of years, I think, because it is such an amazing thing and it is a mindset. I love that. I said, when she told me last night, Ali did, I said, boy, are we on the same wavelength? <laughs> I know, I know. It really is because God has so much for us and he, you know, the abundant life means so many things. So I think that's a beautiful gift that you're going to, that you're going to give to whoever our lucky winner will be. Uh, so we'll put that in the, in the, in there and each of you who made a comment today your name is going in there and uh like lisa say we'll we'll get any other logistical things figured out but it's pretty easy you comment engage with us and then your name goes into the raffle and each of our guests over the next few weeks will be donating something to us so we'll have several prizes to give away right lisa yes yes i think it'll be a lot of fun yeah i do too uh, any uh, uh other follow-up things that we need to bring to mind? Well, um, I'd like to put a challenge out there for the word leadership. You know, one of the things that I, John Maxwell has taught and some other the other people that teach about leadership is that um, is to um, is to be vulnerable. So in your leadership styles, choose to start to share that you aren't perfect um, that you are willing to learn from others or at least exchange ideas and, and be open and learn um, about the other person that you're in a leadership role with. This emotional connection can really uh, accelerate your leadership skills and makes you a, a much wiser and better leader. So if so, my challenge is to anybody is to check, you know, audit your vulnerability and see if you can open up more in your leadership roles. Yeah, I think, yeah, that really is. And of course, John Maxwell is an amazing leader and he has trained so many leaders through the years. I mean, he has really made huge influence on being godly leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, if you're ever looking for something to read or to, you know, to focus on, um, he has quite a well, I mean, I don't even know how many you know, could have a hundred, 40, 50, whatever, a lot of books on leadership that can really um, help you if you're looking for that. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that, though. I think like when you are willing to step out in your failure and you're willing to share that with people, it actually makes people want to work with you more because they can see you're genuine and that you're not perfect. And they're like, well, if she can do it, then I can do it because she totally messed up, you know? Um, and it just, it just allows you, allows that gap of like where you were to where you are now 
it, it shortens it and it shortens for them. Cause they're like, well, she's just a few steps ahead of me. I can do it too, you know, and mm -hmm. I can do it messy. I don't have to do it perfectly, you know, because God never said we had to be perfect. He just had, but he just said we, we are striving to become like him, but we're not ever going to get there in this life anyways. So we just need to keep moving forward and have progress in what we're doing. And so that's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, you know, an example of this that went really well, it, it don't always go so well, but, <laughs> but it went well, um, was that I had my granddaughter and, and she was, um, she was here because she was having some problems. She's 12 right now. She's having problems with a little bit of depression. And I sat her on my lap and we talked about sometimes that grandma had had, you know, some severe bouts of depression. And, and I, her look, when she looked at me was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, cause I told her about a time and this was a, a very vulnerable time when I was raising kids and we were really little and just everything was going wrong. And it had gone wrong for almost six months and I was tired and there were all these things. And I told her, I went into the laundry room because this is one of the things she does. And I said, I, I went into the laundry room, curled up in a corner and cried for hours. And she looked at me and she goes, grandma, what, you, you know, and she was just like, and, and so then we talked about how I overcame that, but that, but because I was willing to share with her that grandma wasn't perfect. And I had my moments where I collapsed and you know, was very depressed and having problems. She sat there and just listened. You could just see her eyeballs glued. Wow. And we just had one of those really precious moments, but I think had I not ever been vulnerable, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have ever happened. Yeah. Oh, that's, that is beautiful, Lisa. And I, I think you are so right um, because our kids um, and, and we want our kids, you know, the, the thing we want our kids and our grandchildren to, you know, respect us and look up to us and those kind of things. But when you're eight, when you do, you know, peel back that onion, so to speak, and let them see uh, that, that you've gotten where you are because you've had to face some of those things. It really encourages them. I bet that's a lesson that will stay with her a long time. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Plus it glued us together. You know, mm -hmm. we have something that we can share now. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So, well, I, I love that story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I think too, um, just even in whatever it is, there's just when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, as you said, it does let others, uh, it, it breaks down a, a wall and it just lets others see us more clearly, which then helps them be able to identify some of those same things. So exactly. I think good leaders do that. Okay. Well, we are going to um, summarize it up here this morning. So as Lisa said, y'all think about this week and we'd love it if you would answer us next week about how you maybe saw leadership differently or how you see yourself as a leader and really think about that this week. Um, and the other thing that came to mind, this is a, you could be in a group. I don't know what that group would be, but you could be in a group and there could be a leader, the teacher of the group, but you may still be the leader within the group because sometimes people look to you on how you are uh, responding. And when the, you know, like it's just people are watching this all the time. So be really aware of this week, really challenging you at that to be aware of where you are as a leader that you might not have expected. So it's kind of, it'll be a fun exercise for you. Allie, thanks so much for being here. Any last comment you want to share? This has been awesome. Just remember, you know, we're all leaders in all these different ways. And so just being able to step into that will um, will just give you more joy than you could possibly imagine because when you watch other people you know succeed and when you when you truly um, remember who our true leader is uh, and you become more like him, then everything else just like I said it falls in it falls into place or it falls away. <laughs> so, right right And you see on the banner there that you can um, check out Allie at askallieporter.com. Mm -hmm. check that yep. and I don't know if you want to. Um, type it into the comments, Allie, that because when they watch it, I'm not sure if they would get that, but if you want to put oh, it in. Yeah. There, yeah. I'll put that in after we're done. Uh, Cause I okay. can't comment right now. So. Oh, you can't. Okay. Nope, I, <laughs> I, will. I will after we're done. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And I look Lisa. forward to 
being in the group. So um, thanks, thanks for being here. Just, just mm -hmm. glad that we had this, uh, had our guest and had this wonderful word to talk about. So awesome. yeah. It's been great. So every week we have a new word and our guests, what we're doing is our guests will pick the word for the, for the week, for the day, for that day, but it's the word for the week. <laughs> now, many of us have a word for the year, so this is kind of fun. Now we have a word of the week, so that's awesome. Yeah. All right, my friends, you know I love you. Thank you so much for being here because you could be a lot of places on Tuesday morning. And I also want to uh, finish as I always do because I think it's so important to realize is that life is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. So choose wisely. Go out and be the leader God created you to be and make it a great week. Mwah. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. Bye.